Hi awesome third graders. I wanted to do a quick video about our FC recording sheet. I've gotten a few questions about it. I've done a video um, tutorial with one of our students and I wanted to do one for all of you in case you were having similar questions about it. One thing I want to remind you of is your tools. You have a ton of resources right at your fingertips. They're your interactive journals. I sent home your math, your science, your social studies. You have these journals there to go back and look at some of those resources. That's why we make them, right? So what we're learning, we put in there, we can go back and check them out. One of the things that you have in your journal is gonna be an Epsi page. Yours may be a different color. I have a couple of different years um, journals with me here. And this is just an explanation of what each square is in case you forget, okay? This is gonna be very important for you. And also, if you will remember in that journal, we have this page. It's all of those keywords for operations. So if I'm looking for, um, I have a problem and it keeps talking to me and asking me how many in all what's the sum well I know it's going to be addition it tells me those keywords right there so you have this okay again it may be a different color for yours for this year and then we wrote a bunch of words down so this is going to be helpful when you are reading the word problems all right so let's just look at our upsy that's in your packet for this week I'm going to kind of go through it with you it's going to be kind of a freebie um, but I want to make sure that everybody understands because guess what these upsies like this we did not have these your parents did not have them when they were in school I didn't have this so it might be kind of new to them so maybe this will help everybody so it starts off, let's read the problem. It says Pete has $90. He spent $28 on a baseball glove and 19 on a bat. Pete put the rest of his money in his bank account. How much money did he put in his bank account? Okay, so think about what's the first thing that we would wanna do while we're reading this word problem. I'm just giving you some time to think. We would want to underline important information. If that's what you said, shine your little halo, okay? We want to underline important information. One thing that's super important is we know that how much money he's starting off with. So we could underline that $90. Another important information would be how much he's spending on items and possibly what are they asking us for? They said, how much money did he put in his bank account? So we need to know how much money he's going to have to put into his bank account. Okay, all of that's good information. I'll give you a minute to highlight it or to underline that. All right, let's look at the U. The U for an EPSI is understand. And on ours, it says what information is important. Okay, so we just talked about that. So we're going to write that down here. What information is important? We could write um, starts with $90 or begins with $90. That's important information. Spent $28 on a glove. Night, spent $19 on a bat. That's all important information. It's telling us how much money he started off with, um, what he's buying and how much it costs. That's all very important information, okay? So let's write that down right here. I'm gonna give you just a minute to do that. And our next part, I need to find. What do we need to find? What are they asking us up here that we need to figure out? We're gonna read it one more time together, okay? Pete has $90. Does that tell us what we need to find? No. He spent $28 on a baseball glove and $19 on a bat. Does that tell us something we need to find? No, they already gave us information. They're giving us good information. That isn't what we need to find. Pete put the rest of the money in his bank account. 
how much money did he put in his bank account? Ooh, we need to know how much was the rest of the money, right? Um, so I need to find how much money he put in his bank account. So go ahead and let's write that there where it says I need to find. I'll give you a minute to write that down. All right, let's look at the P, okay? P says plan. It says create a strip diagram, write an equation. Now I did upload in your math folder under resources is a YouTube video, um, not from me. I found one a teacher had made, it was perfect. No need for Ms. Wilkerson to recreate the will. So I uploaded that just to give you a quick reminder on strip diagrams. Now a strip diagram, remember, it contains parts and whole, all right? So the top part of a strip diagram is the whole, the whole amount. And then we have parts, okay? So let's think about the whole. In this problem, what's the whole? What's the whole amount of money that he starts with that he has? How much? $90, good job. So $90 is the whole. That's what we start with is $90, all right? Now we need to figure out the parts that we're gonna be solving for. What's one of the parts? Good job. One of the parts is $28 for the baseball glove. And our last part is $19 for that bat, okay? So here we have our strip diagram. You can also draw a strip diagram the way we've drawn it some in class also is, trying to turn, stay in the camera, we can have it like this. And the top part represents the whole. And then on the bottom, we have our parts, okay? So we are creating a strategy. We are creating something to help us come up with an answer. All right, we create our strip diagram. It wants us to write an equation. Now, we have all of this information, but this isn't all we need to do with it. We need to figure out, we have these numbers, but what do we need to do first to solve for this? We know he had $90, and we know that a part of it went to a glove, and we know a part of it went to a bat, but now what do we do? It's the first step we would need to do to figure this problem out. I'll give you just a minute, just think about it for a second. We know he has $90 to start off with. Do we know how much um, money he spent altogether? We don't know that yet. So let's create, let's write this equation with how much he spent. So what are the two parts that we need to add? We need to add the $28 for the glove and we need to add the $19 for the bat, okay? I want you to do that real fast. Take your time. We'll check it together. Okay, nine plus eight is 17. And then we have two, three, and four. So all together, he spent $47 on his spat and his glove, all right? So we are going to write an equation on how we can solve this. So we know he started out with how much? Just joking, we don't need to write that dollar sign. He started out with 90, okay. What do we need to do next? The money that he spent on the glove and the bat, are we gonna add it to 90? Is that gonna tell us how much he has left over? 
Are we going to subtract it? We are going to subtract it. So now, what are we going to subtract? We're going to subtract the $47, right? And we are trying to solve for how much is left over. He started with 90. He spent $47 on his glove and his bat. And now we are trying to figure out how much he's going to have left for that bank. Okay? So that completes our, our P for the plan. So you should have that filled in right here. And let's go to solve. And solve says, I will show all of my work. We definitely need to show our work. So this part, that was just our plan. We wrote an equation. We wrote the number sentence for it. But now we really do need to solve. So when we subtract, what the 90 or 47, which one should go on top? The big number or the little number? The big number. So I'm going to write my 90 on top. I'm going to subtract my 47. And you're going to show me your work. You're going to do it right here and solve. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to do it on your own, and we'll check it together, OK? Look, you ready? If you're still working on it, it's okay. You finish that up. So here is my problem. Can I subtract a zero from that seven, a smaller number on top of a bigger number? Does that work? Mm -mm. I'm gonna need to regroup, right? And when I regroup, where do I have to go? Next door to my neighbor. So zero goes next door to nine. He says, hey nine, can I borrow just one and nine says, sure, nine's a good neighbor. So the nine turns to an eight. And what does our zero turn to? A 10, good job. So our zero turns to a 10. Now, can I take 10 from seven or seven from 10? Yes, it's a bigger number. So if I have 10 and I take seven away, I'm left with three. And now I have eight and four. And if I take four away from eight, I'm left with four. So now we've solved that. We've solved our $90 he started with minus the $47 that he bought the glove and the bat with. He has $43 left. Okay, don't do anything quite yet. Don't get too excited. We have one more square. We solved it. And I'm sure you showed your work because you're good at showing your work. Our last square is the E of our EPSI page. It's evaluate. Does my answer make sense? So we have $43 left. If we started with 90 and we spent 47, does it make sense to you that we would only have 43 left? Think about it when we would do a problem and we would talk about making sense and we started with $90. If your answer came out to $123, would that answer make sense if we only started with $90 and we spent some money, but we came out with over a hundred? Does that make sense? That's what it's asking you. It's asking you to think, does my answer, does it make sense? So our answer does make sense. 43 seems like a logical answer. The second part, did I answer the quick, correct question? So what was the question they asked us? They asked us, how much money did he put in his bank? That means how much money did he have left over? Is that what we answered? We said that he started with 90, he spent 47, and he had 43 left over. So we did answer that question correctly. And the last part, how can I check my work? Now that's what you're going to write in this E. How can you check your work? If we have a subtraction problem, we have this problem, how can we, how can we check it? How can we make sure that we did it right. What's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. So we can form an addition problem, an addition sentence. What two numbers would we add to 
see if this is right. How could we check this? Okay, we could add, remember, we always add the answer and the one right there on the bottom. Let's see. If I were to add 47 plus 43, okay, I want you to do this. Do this in the square, in the evaluate square. You start to write it for me, and we're going to check it together. If we did our math right, then we should end up with a 90, right, to check our work. So let's see if we did it right. What is seven plus three? It is 10. Good job, we carry our one, we have a zero. Four plus four is eight, plus one is bum, 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 90. We checked our work, we got it right. So we just used the Upsy as a strategy to help with that problem. So how much money did Pete put in the bank? He put $43 in the bank. Awesome. All right, guys, anytime y'all have questions, you ask me. That's what I'm here for. <sighs> Ms. Wilkerson's a teacher. I love to teach, and it's hard for me not to teach, so I love it. If you don't mind um, watching me and my videos, I love making them for you. This is how we learn together, okay? I love you guys. I miss you terribly. You keep those questions coming, okay? We're going to get through this together. No doubt. I love you. Bye.